welcome to uh, my beautiful motorhome. I bought this just before COVID <clears throat> as a project to work on while we were in uh, lockdown. So I actually ended up spending two years and probably, I don't know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in in uh, materials uh, to fix this all up the way I wanted it. Um, the driver's seat was awfully cramped. The seat wouldn't go back very far, so I modified this. You can probably see how this can actually come back, which allows the seat to come back for someone that's over over five feet to be much more comfortable in the driver's seat. Um, I also redid the dash. See if I can zoom in there. So you can see the dash here that we have a uh, backup camera right over here, tire pressure monitors here, the braking system for the toad here. I've got a little switch right here, which turns on and off some USB plugs back in here. Also turns off and on the uh, brake system for the toad, uh, your cell phone attaches magnetically right there for GPS. I've got a nice little level right here in the front so you can level the motorhome right from the driver's seat, get it pretty close. Uh, here's my little mascot. And I put in an extra light up here. Up above the cab, you can see that uh, I put in cabinets here. This, the bed up here was very claustrophobic and small. And uh, my idea was to create a couple's motorhome really although there's room to sleep for you can see these slide out lots of room for storage at all all three sides and a curtain which you can draw claw across a curtain you can draw across and block the cab when you're parked you can see i've got rid of all the feces brown on the motorhome most motorhomes that you buy are that horrible feces brown color inside. And uh, we did everything in kind of a tan and gray. And uh, there's some cup holders. Here's the bed, which used to be a, what would you call it? A uh, dinette. I've got some cup holders over here. Uh, nice L-shaped uh, dining area here with these beautiful faux marble tables. You can sit and eat there. You can sit and eat over there. Or you can swing this right around and it can go in front of that table. Now it also has a little dimple here which will fasten. I had a big uh, iMac computer which I fastened there and as we traveled I used that for, uh, for my computer. Something I forgot when we were in the dash area, I changed out that horrible doghouse cover that comes with the Ford, which seems completely useless. I put in two cup holders and a nice little table, and then this extra piece folds up or down. If you want to drive down the road and have a bowl of potato chips or something there, you can do that. Now these, getting back to these, these are called yacht tables, and they move around nicely like this. So when you're traveling, it can be snugged right up there. And of course we have another one over here, which actually moved my stuff off of it. Can also come around and we can use it as an extra table at the kitchen, or not, uh, another workspace, I should say. Also, I put a, uh, move that out of the way, right over the bed, I have another, counter that comes down and uh, it adds to the uh, counter counter space in the kitchen. Uh, there are some plug-ins right back here strong enough to run a coffee machine or that sort of thing and uh, and this as well is a super comfortable bed. It's 12 inch foam goes all the way down to here incredibly comfortable. This is one of the most comfortable beds I've ever slept in in my life. And down here I've installed a 
small air conditioning unit, which it of course is in the garage underneath the motorhome. And uh, it runs off of the 12 volt batteries as well as the generator or the uh, 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 shore power, of course. And you can hear just how quiet this little air conditioner is. Let's compare the sound of that to the regular motorhome air conditioner. You can probably see that it's much more comfortable sleeping at night with that little air conditioner. Depending on how hot it is and how uh, where you are, you may want to cool the place off with the big air conditioner first and then use this little one at night. And again, you can be boondocking and this air conditioner will run just off the batteries. Um, I've never really measured it, but I imagine the temperature and, and that sort of thing will run at least eight or nine hours. There's a little remote control for it that you could use at the bed, which I have never used it actually. Put in a little chandelier up here. You can see the same thing with all these cupboards. Here's a nice little spice rack I've built in. And uh, cupboards. I put in a double size uh, fiberglass sink. It's lighter weight, all brand new, brand new taps there as well. Took apart the, uh, took the air conditioner, or the, excuse me, took the microwave out and cleaned everything up and mounted everything properly. There's the fan, I put a new, uh, a new fan vent through the walls in as well. I took apart the stove and cleaned it all up inside so it's like new, painted up some things that needed painting. And uh, in the oven, I put a pizza stone in there so it makes the uh, oven very functional. Uh, the pizza stone's in a piece of foam right here. Obviously, you take the foam out when you're not traveling. And the countertops, I took them all out and I made a it's kind of a faux granite. Uh, the pictures don't really do it justice. It looks just absolutely gorgeous. You can see how, and I've got a nice splash here up towards the bed so you don't spill any water from the sink area onto the bed. All the valances and stuff off. I hung some nice curtains here. I changed out all the light bulbs so they're all LED now instead of incandescent so they use just a tiny fraction of the power. I put in a nice handle here for getting in and out of the bed should you happen to need it. Now over here there was a wardrobe that uh, you'd hang your suit or your dre dresses that sort of thing. We didn't really think that was needed so you can see that I have put in a pantry here that holds all kinds of stuff. It's really, it's really deep and uh, holds all kinds of goodies. The fridge is massive. You can see the, oh well, massive, it's big, maybe not massive. There's the inside of the freezer, lots of room for ice cream, etc. All kinds of frozen stuff for a couple weeks. There's the fridge. Underneath the fridge, I've made an area, I use these sl yacht slam latches and underneath there you can put some pots and pans up higher, lots of room down there. And I forgot to mention that when I was over here at the couch, that instead of having all this wasted space underneath, I uh, put in a nice big drawer here, which again is right down on the floor so you can put lots of heavy things in there, it keeps the weight low and uh, pots and pans or again whatever you think is appropriate and we have a nice surprise in here a couple of them again took out the or cleared the things brown put in a new cabinet countertop with a cup holder for toothbrushes a glass sink i took out the glass shower which was useless it would fall out every time you drove somewhere put in one of these really slick canister retracting uh, shower doors. And of course there's the shower um, apparatus, lots of hooks, a little bit of tile there, there's the toilet. 
thermostat works perfectly runs this furnace down here uh, we almost never use that it works just fine when we were sleeping in uh, the mountains in Colorado in August we just slept cold with some extra blankets and for about seven minutes each morning we turned the furnace on just to take the chill off in the motorhome before we got up and uh, walk, walked around. Now what have I missed? Underneath the oven again I used one of these slam uh, latches and in there I've put a five gallon water container so you can take that into your local grocery store and fill it with fresh water. The uh, water from that five gallon container just pumps right into the sink where you can uh, catch for cooking or whatever. Paper towels up there. I have a damp red hanging here just uh, to keep any humidity out of the motorhome. By the sink I've got this little garbage container here and inside kind of redone everything. Got a little little bait trap in there. There's room for, I don't think you can see in there very well. And then of course there's silverware drawer and knives, etc. Whatever you want to have there. I put this little step in for my grandson, but depending on who you are getting up into the bed, you could use that as an adult as well. It's glued and screwed on there. Motorhome came with a max fan, but I put a, uh, I'm not sure what they call it, a rain shield or whatever on top of it so that uh, you can leave it open even in the rain and the water comes in. So if you're wanting to leave the campground, we didn't have any pets in here, but if you had a pet, you could leave that on to keep things cool and not worry about it raining and rain coming in. Underneath this seat, which you'll see in a picture I'll put in, 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries, huge amount of storage capacity for off the grid camping for those that don't know what that means. Uh, there's a new 60 amp charger, which is bigger than what the motorhome supplied in the first place, faster charging of your batteries. There's also a new DC to DC 20 amp charger, which means when you're driving down the road, the, the uh, engine actually charges those lithium batteries. This little column right here runs up to the roof to 600 watts of solar panels. And here's the all-in-one inverter, converter, solar, etc. panel right there. And I'd forgot to mention with the TPS, with the tire pressure monitors, that there's 10 sensors. It monitors all six tires on the motorhome as well as the four on the towed vehicle, should you buy that as well. And uh, the motorhome has has all six new tires since I started the project. Uh, and the spare tire isn't new, but it looks brand new. All the other tires are brand new. Uh, the Fit also has four brand new tires. And you should be able to see just how much space there is in here. It almost feels like a vehicle with a slide out, even though there are no slide outs. Because I removed that dinette, which came out to about there, there was probably only about 14 inches between the kitchen and the edge of the di dinette and now there's probably somewhere just under four feet through there. Also this couch pulls out and becomes a bed should you need it. Uh, and I made it six foot, five inches long, but stepdaughter is very, very tall. I neglect to mention that I uh, tore out all of the horrible carpet as well and put in this beautiful vinyl that looks like hardwood. And then also by the front door, I built this little pull-out cabinet for shoes. Because if you've had a motor on before, the shoes, you put them on the stairs and you risk falling on them. This goes way back, probably over three feet. So there's room for all kinds of shoes, depending on how many shoes your wife has. But even, you know, you want to have, even if you're a guy, you want to have water shoes, you want to have hiking boots, you want to have some sandals probably. So the shoes end up, uh, collecting quite a bit. Yes, and I forgot to mention the fold-down television. And the television comes down right above the uh, door. And although it's kind of old-fashioned, there's also a DVD player up there and uh, cables if you want to hook up to 
uh, cable if you're at a campground that has it. And here's the little thing that selects the cable or whatever. This is a smart TV, so you can stream all of your programs. We'd usually use a hotspot and we'd stream Netflix or uh, all those sort of things. And you can see it folds right up out of the way when you're traveling. And here are the controls for the different systems. So that one says that we have two thirds of a tank of propane. And this would measure the batteries for the for starting the generator only. And there's a charger down inside here that charges those batteries as well. They're they're lead acid, but the motorhome batteries are now strictly uh, uh, iron phosphate. And there measures as half a tank of fresh water, the black tank. As in most motorhomes, that black tank one doesn't work very well because I guess toilet paper gets wrapped around the sensors or whatever. So everything worked fine other than that that one is never very accurate. And that is the uh, gray tank. So the gray tank has a little bit in it. The black tank just has a little bit, although it's measuring higher. And then of course there, you can turn the water pump on or off. If you have shore power to campground, you wouldn't use that. And here you can use the hot water heater with LP gas, or you can use it as electric if you're park plugged into shore power, or if you're running the generator. Release this table. You can see that I put in a nice thick foam uh, matting on the floor because we found when we were driving in real hot temperatures that the pavement underneath the motorhome heated up the floor and it was a little, a little, a little hot. So now we don't get any heat coming in from there at all. It's, that pad is probably at least a half an inch thick. And I put a little tray up here which is fastened down. You could remove it. I think I just put it on with Velcro but it was ever so handy for glasses thing in there so that i can drive and it creates uh, like a pair of sunglasses going down the road and i forgot to open this up I, and i forgot to mention i've got these gas struts so that they hold up on their own these are things that you can put over the windows to insulate um we found we didn't need that really uh only time i would recommend it if you're camping somewhere very hot and the sun shining on one side of the vehicle. I've measured the side of the vehicle that to be 140 degrees in the sun in Florida. And so of course those are invaluable. And the black thing that you see is actually the back side of the uh, blindfold, which goes across the windshield to keep the heat out, which we did use that when we were camping both in hot and cold. And this side has yeah. some extra cushions that make into the bed. And I can remove this, but this is this held the uh, iMac upside down in there so that it was secure and it wouldn't bump. I've got some padding up there. And again, there's more of those things to cover the windows. And I just replaced this clear piece that slides in there to keep bugs out when you're using just the screen. Also, this mechanism here they put a very cheap piece of metal in for the bolt and I've changed it out with the stainless steel one so that will never ever break again we were camping in Durango and and lock things up and we couldn't get in fortunately we were able to get in through the cab and then uh, undo all the screws and take that all apart and uh, buy some properly made pieces to repair it and make it better than new. I love this little chandelier that I put in above the bed. It, uh, it looks so, so cool, so much nicer than the typical fixtures in a motorhome. Release this table. You can see that I put in a nice thick foam uh, matting on the floor because we found when we were driving in real hot temperatures that the pavement underneath the motorhome heated up the floor and it was a little a little, little hot so now we don't get any heat coming in from there at all it's that pad is probably at least a half an inch thick and I put a little tray up here which is fastened down you could 
remove it. I think I just put it on with Velcro, but it was ever so handy for glasses and things like that. I also put a uh, thing in there so that I can drive and it creates uh, like a pair of sunglasses going down the road. And I forgot to open this up I, and I forgot to mention I've got these gas struts so that they hold up on their own. These are things that you can put over the windows to insulate. Um, we stone, we didn't need that really. Uh, only time I would recommend it if you're camping somewhere very hot and the sun's shining on one side of the vehicle. I've measured the side of the vehicle out to be 140 degrees in the sun in Florida. And so of course those are invaluable. And the black thing that you see is actually the back side of the uh, blindfold, which goes across the windshield to keep the heat out, which we did use that when we were camping both in hot and cold. And this side has uh, some extra cushions that make into the bed and I can remove this, but this is, this held the uh, iMac upside down in there so that it was secure. It wouldn't bump about some padding up there. And again, there's more of those things to cover the windows. And I just replaced this clear piece that slides in there to keep bugs out when you're using just the screen. Those things are always getting broken, so I put them brand new. Also, this mechanism here, they put a very cheap piece of metal in for the bolt, and I've changed it out with the stainless steel one, so that will never, ever break again. We were camping in Durango and and locked things up and we couldn't get in. Fortunately, we were able to get in through the cab and then uh, undo all the screws and take that all apart and uh, buy some properly made pieces to repair it and make it better than new. I love this little chandelier that I put in above the bed. It, uh, it looks so, so cool, so much nicer than the typical fixtures in a motorhome. And back behind it, we have a place where you can, while you're in bed, get uh, USB or you can get uh, 12 volt from there as well. And it tells you how many volts or the lithium batteries are now producing about 14.3 volts. So there's my windsurfer on the side of the motorhome. And uh, there's the garage. Uh, probably a little hard to see in there, but it's massive garage. Lots of room for all kinds of things in there. There's the back side of the air conditioner there. So we pretty much finished the motorhome this last June. And July we headed out. July 3rd we went to Fort Myers Beach for the fireworks. And then we worked our way to Colorado, uh, Denver, and uh, up into Rocky Mountain National Park and down over the Million Dollar Highway past Ure and uh, uh, Silverton, Durango. And then each of the places that we stopped, we used the little Honda Fit as a shuttlecraft. So we could park, for example, in, Den in, uh, in Durango, we parked the motorhome for 15 days. And each day we went out in the motor, or in the uh, Fit, uh, to uh, Mesa Verde and to Bona Vista and back up to Silverton, uh, Molas Pass was one of the beautiful, most beautiful places in the world, so we drove back up into there one day. We drove inland uh, ways to a powwow one day. We rode the Silverton train, um, uh, the Durango train, I guess it's called. There's just uh, millions of things to do in that area, and it was so handy to not have to pack up the motorhome and drive it somewhere each day. We could stay parked. Uh, initially, we only stayed parked two or three days and we realized how nice it was to be able to just leave it parked for a longer period of time and just go out like spokes of the wheel in every direction depending on the day to some uh, something nearby. I don't know if you can hear the rain pouring down behind me right now. Um, the little air conditioner is running right now so I imagine you can hear me pretty good even though that little air conditioner is running and cooling the place off nicely. Generator works great. I changed the oil and put in a new air filter before we headed off to Colorado. The hot water heater 
works fine. It works on either gas or electric. And the refrigerator works on either 110 or of course the generator or uh, propane. And on the outside, I mentioned, forgot to mention that, I set it up so that there's some uh, hookups where you can just plug your barbecue into the side of the motorhome to pick up your propane. And uh, the way I set it up, you can also carry a 20 pound tank with you. And should the motorhome ever run out of or get low on propane, you can actually back feed the 20 pound bottle into the motorhome. So let's say you're stuck somewhere winter camping and uh, if your furnace ran out of propane, you can actually hook the 20 pound bottle up to the motorhome pretty easily and uh, and that'll rescue you until you can get your tank filled again. Actually, probably run a week on that 20 pound bottle, maybe even longer. Those are things that we just didn't ever need to use. I designed and cut out this windsurfer for the side of the motorhome and on the other side a snowboarder and on the front I have a uh, uh, rubber rafting scene. My wife loves rubber rafting. I love skiing and uh, windsurfing. I was a ski patroller in Canada at one time. There's the ladder and the canopy, of course. Brand new canopy just three months ago or so. Although I have to admit that some leaves, a little bit of the tan and the leaves have stained a couple spots on the brand new canopy, but it should last for many years. And this is what we've been dreaming of, a nice campfire. And I don't know, you can probably hear the river roaring in the background or right on the edge of the river. Here's the fish marrow caught for dinner. And I'm wondering if tomorrow's gonna get a moose. <laughs> a little hankering for moose meat. <laughs> So there's easily room for two folding bikes in the back of the Honda Fit. <laughs> 